Hey guys, um, thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate you uh, joining me today. It's really awesome. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for what you're about to do and what you have already done and what you and what you are doing, Lord God, because we know you're active in every every moment, every day, every second of our lives. We know that nothing is out of your control, oh God. Lord, I pray that today you'll speak in an unexpected and miraculous way. In the name of Jesus, amen. Speak to me and speak through me. I give you all the praise and all the glory in the name of Jesus, amen. So guys, um, today's sermon is called, um, God is Stronger. Uh, God is Stronger. I was, when I was going through my week and, and uh, while going through my week, um, I began to worry about stuff I was hearing. And in the midst of my worry and my uh, stress, I heard the Lord say, I am stronger than whatever you're going through right now. And that's what he wants me to say to you today. He's, he wants me to say that he is stronger. Whatever it is you're facing, good, bad, or ugly, he is stronger than whatever you're facing. I know it seems heavy. I know the pain seems unbearable, but he wants me to say today that he is stronger. Sometimes when we're going through uh, stuff, either challenges or, or like stuff we, we can't see our way through, we just tend to forget that there is a God and he sits high and he looks low. But, but while he's looking low, he's not just looking passively. He's with you in whatever you're going through. And I know this is so cliche to, to say that God is with you wherever you go. Um, I heard, heard um, a few sermons um, about God being with you in your pain, and God is with you wherever you are, but he wants me to reiterate that not only is he with you, he is stronger. He is stronger than what you're going through. Um, and in going through, going through my week and hearing all these uh, things that were having me stressed out, he gave me a little uh, saying. He said, your situation is strong. Um, he said that, yes, it is strong. Um, strong meaning it just seems insurmountable. It seems like it's going to overtake you. It seems like the waves are just crashing uh, around you. Um, he said, yes, your situation is strong. He said, but you are stronger. Um, he wants me to tell you that you are strong enough to face this. And you don't face that alone, but I'll get to it. Like, I'll get to that part later. Um, you are stronger. Um, you are strong enough to face any situation, and He has given you the tools. So, what He wants me to ask you today is, what has He said to you in the the light that you that you're now having to use in the dark he always gives us something to work with 
He does. He never leaves us without tools. Although we think it's little, we think it's nothing, but he's always given me the tools. So now it's time to dig deep and remember the tools that he's given you. Uh, whether it be a song, whether it be the Word of God, the two most common tools, um, whether it be a sermon that you heard from someone else. He's always giving you something, and he's, and he's telling you right now through me. He's asking you, what have I given you? Remember what I told you. What I told you years ago still stands, and you are stronger than whatever you're facing. It doesn't, it doesn't seem like you are, but you are stronger than your cancer. You are stronger than that, that job loss. You are stronger, and he's put in you what you need to face and get through this situation, whatever this situation is. He's put it in you. You're praying and you're praying, and that's wonderful to pray. That's essential to pray. But, but don't let prayer be the only thing that you do. He's put... He... He's put what you need for this task in you. And don't forget what he told you when things were light and happy. Dig deep and remember what he told you. Remember what he said in his word. Remember what, what that preacher said about getting through the dark times. Remember, he's saying you, you have to call back to your memory. And for those of you who are going through the light times now, like nothing's really wrong or whatever, he said, begin to store up now. Begin to store up food now. Begin to store up wisdom now. Begin to store up um, things now so that when trouble comes, you have re reserves and resources to get you through. Not only for when trouble comes, but make, make God just a, a primary source Whenever you're getting into anything, whenever you're getting into life, so you don't just depend on him when you're in trouble. Um, if he's your primary source, where things come from, uh, you don't just depend on him when you're in trouble, or you don't just worship him when you're in church. It it becomes a daily lifestyle. People are living all kinds of lifestyles now, and he wants you to develop a lifestyle uh, so that when trouble comes, it's not easy, it's painful, it's nerve-wracking, it's hard, but the reserves you built up, if it becomes, if he becomes a lifestyle, when you, when you hit trouble, it doesn't feel so insurmountable. And even if it does, you can, you remember that, oh, God's word is this, because he taught me that. And he also, so, um, your situation is strong, you are stronger, but God is strongest. He wants me to say, 
whatever situation you're facing right now. He is strongest in that situation. He's looking over that situation. He's perfecting in you what he needs for, from you. Every circumstance, it may look like it's so dark, but God's behind the scenes working things out and, and doing things. I like movies, and, uh, and, I, and I love the behind the scenes uh behind the scenes looks when i when i used to get dvds and even now on youtube i look for behind the scenes and even with songs because you know i love music i like song stories i like to know where songs come from so i don't listen I don't just listen to songs. I always wonder where that song came from, what the genesis of that song was. And even when I read books, because you know I'm a reader as well, um, when I read a book, I love to hear where that book came from or like what inspired the author to write that book, what what was their process in writing? I'm interested in that because there you get the the nuts and bolts of how they came to what story they came to or how they came to write their biography or whatever. Behind the scenes of trouble, you you get the nuts and bolts of what God is doing in you. But what I mean by the nuts and bolts, you get the uh, beginning of what God is doing in you. And um, he, he's always doing something. So behind the scenes, it may look like this. But look further or look at the very beginning of something, you will see what um, he's planning to do in you. A few weeks ago, I talked about uh, how this pastor at a church said, um, I will never uh, get, get to minister unless I come out of this chair. And I went through about a year of depression and, and anger and stuff like that. And why did you make me like this or whatever. But if I, but behind the scenes, God was preparing me to do this every Sunday. So everything I had gone through, every rejection, every, every, Every time I was told, no, we don't need you here, or no, you can't do that here, it was preparing me to speak to you. So that's why I can speak with such conviction and such passion about God is doing something behind the scenes, because he did it for me, and he's no respecter of, pers of persons. He doesn't care who you are. You're just the same. So, behind the scenes, you know that God is working to, to bring forth a product in you that you, first of all, you can be proud of and um, the world may see that he is God. But he mostly is bringing you through issues to show you who you are. He's mostly not doing it for the world, he's mostly doing it for you. Um, those, those people around you may benefit from what he's doing in your life, they may, may be beneficiaries, 
But they're not perfect. But they're, it's not the purpose of why he's taking you through this. He wants to show you what's in you. And the best way to do it, to do that, unfortunately, most times, is through trouble. And the Lord is saying, don't give up. Stick it out. Because he is strongest over that situation. So, your situation is strong, yes. You feel like it's going to kill you. Um, you are stronger than your situation. You are stronger than you know. You are stronger than you think. You are stronger than you give yourself credit for. Um, and the devil will trick you into thinking, oh, this is just nothing. I'm just a teacher. Or I'm just a mom. Or I'm just someone in a wheelchair who sits in her office every Sunday and talks. He'll trick you into saying that you're just nothing. Um, but that's a lie. You are everything that God has called you to be. And you are not only somebody, but you are here to achieve, achieve your per His purpose. A lot of people say about achieving your purpose, but I don't think um, there is... Um, I'm going to say something controversial here. I don't think it's so much about your purpose. I think it's so much... I think it's more about him achieving his purpose for your life. In, in you. Like, his purpose for the kingdom in you. I think, I think God has a big purpose and a big plan, and we all have a part to play. So, our job now is to, is to, to think of, Lord, where do I fit in your purpose? You have this master plan for the world and this master plan for my life. Where do I fit in this purpose? What's my purpose in the bigger picture? It's like a big puzzle piece. It's like a big puzzle. I heard somebody somebody talk about puzzles the other day. Um, it's like the world is a big big puzzle, like a quadrillion piece puzzle, and everyone has a part to play so that God can fit the pieces together and create an ultimate picture. So, what is your part in God's puzzle picture? What part of the picture do you play? So I don't think it's it's your purpose and your calling. I think it's his purpose through you and his calling um, that is really important. And in that bigger picture, there is a lot of smaller pictures. And that's where uh, your purpose comes in into play. Because it fits into the bigger picture. And you're, you're not just someone to fit into some bigger picture and that's it. You are important to God. And although, yes, I did say you are a part of God's puzzle piece. Did I tell you that you are an essential part of his puzzle piece? You are The part you have to play in the world is essential to the kingdom. Um, he can't do it without you, but don't get it twisted like to say in a vain way, oh, that God needs me. He can't do it without me. I don't mean that way. I mean that you were not just like 
just a part of a big puzzle piece. You are an essential part. And without you, the world will be missing a head or an arm or some fingers or some toes. And that shouldn't, that is not meant to make you uh, be vain, like I'm all that in the bag of chips and God needs me and the kingdom needs me. That is meant to humble you, to know that the God of the universe, this str strongest God over every circumstance, is seeing you. And through him, you become mighty. On my, on my Facebook thing, I, I put, I am, I put, I am nothing. You are everything, but through you, I become something. So, in God's puzzle piece, in God's puzzle, you are an essential piece. And the question is, um, although he is strongest, what part are you meant to play in this puzzle piece? And to know that you are essential, not in a vain way, but it's meant to humble you. It's meant to bring you to your knees. A lot of people now are just not falling on their knees as they should. Like, we're just acting like we, oh, like God owes us the favor. God doesn't owe us anything. Like, we're folding our hands, just looking all bougie and coming in, whatever. Stop that. Stop that. God doesn't owe you anything. It is only his breath while you're while you're alive it's not your breath it's his breath that he puts in you so when it says let everything that has breath the ruah of god praise the lord he's basically saying um let everything that has his breath give him back the breath that he gave to us so you you didn't earn nothing you have nothing he gave you everything so and he just wants it back so it's not your money it's his money that he gave to you so it's not your social media it's his social media and you're just uh, sent to manage it because he is stronger he is the strongest over your life and over the world and he wants you to know that in every circumstance it's him that gave you everything you own nothing you you are just managers like I always say I always say he is the CEO, you are just, um, not just, you are just a manager. But in that, you are an essential piece to this global puzzle that he's putting together. And at the end, we'll see the final picture. And he is working everything out for your good. All the puzzle pieces may not look like they fit together, but at, at the end, they will. Because your life is also a puzzle that he's he's working out to, um, to fit all the pieces of your life together. And it will come to be a picture for your life, but on a global scale, I believe he's doing the same thing for the world. All these, li all these millions of six billion little puzzles that he's putting together is meant to create one big picture, and he won't. 
and we won't see the big picture until he wants us to see it. And he And know that he is strongest over all these situations. He is strongest over Putin. He is strongest over COVID. He is the strongest over your life and your family. That job loss is nothing for God. That cancer treatment is nothing for God. That, whatever th that thing is that you're facing, it's nothing for God. He wants you to know that he is he is strongest. Thank you guys for joining me today. I really, really, really appreciate it. If you're watching this today and you're wondering what is this woman saying or what is going on here, um, um, I am a, uh, I have a disability called cerebral palsy. I, I grew up in the church, I, I've been a Christian for years, and I went through a hard time, um, and I started doing sermons on YouTube because it came from my pain because I had so much to say and nowhere to say it, so I started, um, doing YouTube and and the rest is history and if you're if you're saying I want what what she has in her life what keeps her going well the only thing that keeps me going is my faith in Jesus Christ that's the thing that has kept me steady that's the thing that has has um, kept me going and um, a lot of preachers they pray a prayer and they say like uh, they pray what we call in Christendom the sinner's prayer I am somewhat different I I know and understand that people are at different places places, different stages, different walks in their life, and God is taking people through different things, so I don't pray a prayer for people. I let them accept the Lord in their own time, in their own way. I just say, pour your heart out to the Lord. Let Talk to Him like you're talking to me and let it all go and tell him uh, that you that you accept him or, or if you're not sure you can tell him that hey I'm not sure about this thing uh, this girl this lady is talking about uh, you and puzzle pieces and whatever and I, what she's saying sounds good but I'm not sure you could tell him that too um, and just, just be honest with him and say, I'm not sure I believe you yet, or I'm not sure if I ever believe you, and know that he can handle your questions. Know that he can handle wh who you are or what you are and whatever stage in, in your life. So just, just pour your heart out to him and uh, and ask him to, to, and you can ask him to change your life in whatever way you do it. There, there is no specific way to do it. Just, just pour your heart, heart out to God. And he said, 
if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, you shall be saved. Then what? And what saved actually means is basically, um, he walked with you through your life, and it's not to say that you won't have trouble. You will have trouble, even though you are saved. But you'll you'll have someone to lean on. You won't be alone in your life. And um, sometimes, sometimes, quite honestly, it gets worse. But but the whole. But the greatest thing about knowing Jesus is knowing you have someone that walks beside you, can give you wisdom, can send people and change your life. And that's what he wants to do today. He wants to change your life. He wants me to let you know that he loves you. And the puzzle pieces that I was talking about uh, earlier, he wants you to know that he's putting together. He wants me to tell you that, he, that you're a part of this divine puzzle. And he needs your gifts. He needs your talents in, in what he's doing. And he loves you just the way you are. And you may not feel that you have gifts or talents. You can say, what do I do? But Trust me, brother or sister, you do have gift or talent, despite what that teacher told you, despite what that parent told you. You do have gifts and talents. And he wants me to, me to, to invite you to join the divine puzzle today and add your piece to this wonderful picture that God is creating. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you, Lord, for just being with us. Lord God, and I pray that everyone um, who doesn't know you and is seeing this sermon will find something to help them, oh God. And I pray that you will just bring understanding, bring peace, bring joy. In the name of Jesus, Amen. And if you, if you uh, talk to the Lord and and asked Him to invade your life and become part of your life, and you need second steps, you can just um, Facebook message me or leave a message in the YouTube comments. On Facebook, my, 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 my name is, is the same name, it's Rachel Esdale, and my, my uh, profile is public, so anyone can, can get to it. So if you're not sure what to do, um, just contact me and together we will, we will go through this journey together. So, thank you guys for, for joining me today. I really appreciate you. Thanks. Bye. I'm free. Praise the no longer chains holding me, my soul's resting inside your blessing. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, I'm free. I'm free. Praise the Lord, I'm free. No longer power. No more chains holding me, my soul is resting, it's just a blessing.
praise the Lord. Hallelujah, As I was about to um, go off, um, the Lord wants me to say, He wants to loose you from the chains that have been plaguing your sleep at night, that have been plaguing you during the day, that have been plaguing your family. He wants to release those chains. All you have to do is let go and let him do his work. And I know, um, I sense that you are afraid to let go because you're like, what if I fall? But I have to tell you that you won't fall in the hands of the master. He's got you. He loves you too much to let you fall. And he wants to break those chains right now. And simply, what I mean by chains, whatever's plaguing you, whatever's worrying you, he wants to he wants to remove that from you. He wants to give you joy. He wants to give you peace. Accepting the Lord is just not to not to do something. You have to do something for the Lord. But it's to give you the life that you've always dreamed of. You've been dreaming of a life. Um, a life without, without so much worry or something. Or someone to just help you. Maybe you live alone like me. And sometimes you're wanting someone to just help you. And take it from someone who lives alone too. Um, God can be that help. And he can bring um, people into your life uh, to help you. And he will bring you the right people. You've been doing it on your own for too long. And he says, stop. I've called you to more. But to that but to that end, you've got to trust me. You've been running away from me because religion, religion has scared you. And religion is different from relationships. Religion is a bunch of do's and don'ts and show off and dress this and whatever. And a relationship is just a daily... A daily communication and and when you bring God into your life, like I said last week, God um, doesn't just want to um, be God in trouble or success. God wants to do life with you, and that's what He's saying in this moment. He's saying, "I want to do life with you." He's like, "I know that you're scared." but one step at a time. And I, I know you're kind of jaded because religion did you wrong. And let me just say, I'm sorry about that. I'm really sorry that people in the church are claiming to be Christians did you wrong. But the, the Lord is different than people. You can trust Him and in trusting Him, He will bring the right people into your life. And he understands that you're a bit wary. And it's okay to be wary. It's okay to not know. It's okay to be scared. But just take it one step at a time. One minute at a time. One hour at a time. One day at a time. One week at a time. One month at a time. One year at a time. Just take it one step at a time. And if you're watching this and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm not ready to to do what she's saying, that's okay. I am not going to say, like, preachers used to scare me. Like, if you were to die tonight, where would you be going? 
I'm not gonna use that on you. I'm just gonna say. He understands where you are. He understands how you move through your life. He understands um, everything about you. He understands that things, that things haven't been easy for you. That you've been living in brokenness for long. And he's saying, you know what? Today, I want to, I want to free you. Whatever you did in your past will be forgiven if you ask. Um, he just wants me to say that to take it one step at a time. If it's not today, it'll be, maybe it'll be another day. He's just waiting for you to understand that he, he won't hurt you. He's not with that, like, like that God on the Simpsons that is up up there, gray beard, gray hair, and ready to beat you up over the head. He's he's spreading his arms wide open, and he's ready to hug you. He's ready to embrace you. He's ready to love you. And yes, in that love comes correction. But take it from me. That correction that God gives is so wonderful. It's so loving. And he tailors it to what you need. Um, I don't have kids, but I've heard parents say that you have to, all your kids are different, so you have to tailor your, your discipline to each kid. Some kids go with a look, some kids go with crowning, some kids, you have to do something else. Same thing with God. He understands that all his children are different and need different things. And yes, he will chasten you. He will discipline you, but he'll do it in a way that you can handle or in a way that you need to bring the best out of you. See, the whole purpose with God is to bring the best out of you. Like, His purpose ultimately is to bring His best out of you so you can achieve um, your part of the puzzle. And He wants me to say that today. So guys, thank you so much. Bye. You can tell I'm a real preacher because I have two closings. That's a preacher joke because when we say uh, we're closing, we're probably really not closing. Uh, but I'm really closing this time. I'll see you next time next week. Bye, guys.